Welcome. So I'm always falling down rabbit holes, and the latest one is custom backpacking gear. Because forget the truck camper, you appreciate beauty more when you've suffered for it. When learning about backpacking, I discovered there's two types, ultralighters and happy people. I'm not in the latter camp, so obviously I tried to go ultralight. Here's my tent, it weighs one pound. But I've always still been jealous of one thing that the happy people have, camp chairs. So I've decided to make my own. And here's why it's the perfect project for me. As you spend more money, you get a more rickety chair. And I can totally build something that's janky and over budget. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by Anchor Make. This is not a review, I don't do product reviews, but I will be using the M5C to do this project, and I'll talk a little bit about some of the features it has mid-video. Jumping now into the design. If you look at the existing market, they all consist of like a fabric hammock seat over a frame. And I'm not gonna mess with that general layout, but I am gonna use carbon for the frames connected together by these 3D printed hubs, which I just made using the form tool in Fusion 360. And I'm 3D printing the hubs out of expanding foaming PLA. And now I've got these weird hubs, which are like this lightweight foam substance. It's a very odd filament. And because we're talking about 3D printers right now, let's get the sponsor spot out of the way. So while the M5C can be run wired with Cura, it's really designed to be run wireless with their slicer or the phone app, in which case you just press the one single button on the printer and it goes. It's definitely a workflow designed to make it easier for people who are new to 3D printing. And for a traditional FDM printer, this can run really fast. Uh, the max speed is 500 millimeters per second in the fast printing mode. So this whole dragon was done in just like four hours. And if you care more about precision than speed, they do have a precision mode. You swap in a 0.2 millimeter nozzle and it'll go all the way down to a 0.05 millimeter layer height. So in its price bracket, this printer definitely has a unique Wi-Fi based workflow and some specialty printing modes that other printers in this category don't have. If you want to learn more, you can check out the link in the description. And back to the video. So the carbon rods, which have a 2 millimeter wall thickness, just press fit into the hubs that I just printed. And here's what this frame looks like next to the Helinox frame. Time to try it. I'm gonna give this a D plus for stability, and it's not even lightweight. The prototype frame is actually only 0 0.01 pounds lighter. Not 0 0.1 pounds, 0 0.01 pounds lighter than the benchmark chair. So it's not actually any lighter. Um, I'm gonna redesign it, use slightly thinner carbon, slightly smaller hubs. And a less idiotic angle for the front legs. For version two, I don't just wing the geometry, I actually constrain it all to a 3D sketch the way you should have done it in the first place. And in addition to the steeper front leg angle, I also have these rear cross numbers that I added to keep the thing from wobbling left and right. While this new frame prints, it's time to turn my attention to the fabric hammock. Originally I used Hyvec, which is lightweight and cheap, but that did not work. So now I'm using Dyneema, which is lightweight and expensive. It's what all the most expensive tents are made out of, and it's like a Kevlar reinforced plastic substance. How did that, why? <laughs> oh God. So this is the first time I've ever tried sewing. So whenever anything weird happens, I just give up, take all the thread out and then re-follow the online tutorial for how to thread the machine. This stuff is just crazy. And while Dyneema has good tensile strength, it has horrible abrasion resistance. So I do reinforce the corners with nylon. Next, I put the frame together. This looks complicated, but that's the whole point of ultralight. You've got extra energy when you arrive at camp for your complicated pitch and the 15 minute boil time on your alcohol stove. What are you doing? Do you wanna come on? Yeah, there you go. Okay, this is version two, and uh, it's not as light as it could be um, because I still have the thick, like two millimeter thick walled tubes for all of the beams except for these back braces and this beam. Those ones I've swapped for the thinner walled carbon, uh, but I trust this stuff and I want to use it if possible. The fabric piece isn't totally reinforced yet, but I'm impatient and want to try this thing. And you know what? It's a chair, but not a good one. I'm going to give this a C- minus for stability. I definitely need to reinforce some things before taking it backpacking, but before I do, let's get that record out of the way. My grime-covered Helinox Chair Zero weighs in at 1.1 pounds, and the lightest on the market that you can find is still around one pound. This thing comes at a half a pound. And I say thing, not chair, because we need to talk about that. 
If you consider camp chairs to be chairs, well then this is the world's lightest chair, and at 8 ounces it's not even close. However, the official Guinness Book of World Records lightest chair is actually 21.7 ounces, and the previous record holder was 7 times the weight of my chair. So why does mine not count? Well it turns out there's actually an EU standard defining what is a chair. And that standard includes load tests, which not only can't be passed by a fabric chair, but might not even be possible to perform as described on the hammock style, because the test procedure assumes like a rigid back and a rigid seat. So semantics aside, whatever you want to call this, it's the lightest of its type. And you'll see I did reinforce the upper corners of the fabric, as well as change out some of the white uh, foam PLA hubs for stronger plastic hubs. And that did make the final weight of like the version I'd actually take backpacking 0.56 pounds. And that really might be the difference between taking a camp chair and not. Okay. So on this, you kind of can lean your elbow like yeah, right here. Totally, yeah. You can't do that on this okay. one. Hands up yeah. on this one. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I'm filming just in case it collapses on you and then I'll have a funny, oh, no. a funny clip. There's a chance of that. <laughs> I was, I was a little worried, um, you know, when I sat down and I heard some noises, but yeah. it's not collapsing it's, and it feels stable. It does. It really does. Actually. Does it feel more or less? All right. So rate it on comfort and then like stability versus the other one. Comfort, I think it's the same, honestly. Yeah. It feels very similar to me. Okay. Um, and then stability? Stability, maybe. Um, <laughs> There's the noises. Like if this is a 10, uh, I would give this maybe uh like an eight on okay. stability.